Hello everyone, I am Veos and welcome back to- Oh my gosh, my voice. And before we get started, check this video out. I'll have a link in the description below. Do it. So yeah, I've been sick lately. And for those of you uh, that have, uh, that watched the stream uh, this weekend, that's when I was really, really sick and I had almost completely lost my voice. And in order to talk to anybody, I had to go real low like this. It was kind of comical because people would be saying, Veo, say this, Veo, say that. And I ended up becoming like a movie review voice. In a world where Kerbals run out of snacks, one man, you know, that kind of thing. However, I am feeling better, so I figured I'd make a video. Maybe not the best idea in the world, but... Now, if you remember from the last uh, video for the career mode series, you have to remember I'm playing on moderate hard, so science is real low, and the gathering, all that jazz. So, that, you know, it's, it's more fun that way for me. I don't want to have everything in one go. That's no fun. All the technology is unlocked in one mission. Kind of sucks. But in the last one, we had built the Enterprise. It's in orbit. When I started recording for the next career mode, I wanted to upgrade some of the crafts. So I went through them, combed through them, deleted the ones that I know I'm never going to use again, and uh, touched up some of the other ones. I tried testing out the uh, Delta Star again, because I wanted the Delta Star to help in construction of a space station, or even deliver ship parts. And some ship parts, however, have a lot of drag to them, so I don't think that's going to work for this particular SSTO. But for station parts, something I can make aerodynamic to help with drag issues, then I can definitely make that work. The Delta Star test proved that it could put something up there, so I had put a a test station up there that I would re replace later with something a little better. I know it was a waste of money, but that's okay. I got a lot of it. Thanks to these SSTOs, we're able to do missions like rescuing Kerbals and whatnot for a mere fraction of the price that it costs to build the actual SSTO. So I was making monies. That's not a problem. I think some, yeah, somebody did the math on it one time and for like a $30,000 SSTO with payload, when it came back, the only thing you had to pay for was the fuel. And I think the fuel or something like that cost like four thousand bucks Kerbal bucks so each mission I was receiving like 50 or 60 or even a hundred thousand Kerbal dollars but only spending like three or four thousand bucks on the mission so yeah SSTOs for the win baby so I got the monies we can test all kinds of stuff and I'll try to do it like revert back to launch pad if I can but if I don't I'm, I'm not a, I'm not really worried so the test station was in orbit and the Delta star seemed to work out okay but it definitely needed some upgrading the first one of the first missions that I got in this episode was a rescue mission. Now, like an idiot, I didn't read the fine details, so I thought the rescue mission was to rescue Kerbin, a uh, Kerbin, what? A Kerbal stuck in orbit or stranded in orbit around Kerbin. So I accepted it right away because these are normally pretty easy to accomplish. Little did I realize that the orbit around Kerbin that they were talking about was way out there and in a really messed up orbit. So I had prematurely sent up an SSTO thinking, oh, this was going to be easy money. It wasn't. There's no way an SSTO at this point in time can make it out there without having to be refueled in orbit first. I didn't have the patience or the time to build such a craft, so the best thing that I could think of was to use what we already had up there, and that was the Enterprise. So I thought that was pretty cool, you know, the um, Enterprise's first mission was to go rescue a stranded Kerbinaut that was way out there in Kerbin's orbit. It had the Delta V, it had the maneuverability, it had the space to put more Kerbals in. It was the perfect craft for this rescue mission. Now I had never tested the Enterprise for aero braking. I knew that it would work because of my experience in Kerbal Space Program, but I wasn't too sure. So when the Enterprise came back to Kerbin, I just barely licked the surface of Kerbin, about 50,000 or so. I didn't want it to dive into Kerbin, and it worked. It took a few orbits, but it slowed down enough so that its periapsis and apoapsis matched up into a nice little orbit. So that was good. The Enterprise's first shakedown cruise, basically. I then went back to the Delta Star, upgraded the space station payload, as well as upgrading a couple of things on the actual Delta Star itself, and tried to test launch it again. This time it worked out even better. It put a new space station module up there, a better one. The other space station module that was the test space station module, I went ahead and destroyed that by making it burn up in Kerbin's atmosphere. And when the Delta Star came back to Kerbin, one of the upgrades was a simple action group that deployed the forward canards. Until I'm able to actually revamp the entire Delta Star craft, this will have to be a more or less a cheap fix in order to bring the center of lift up closer to the center of mass when it's completely empty. Because as of right now, it's way, way, way too nose heavy. And so it can't keep stability assist on without nose diving slowly. However, with Ford canards deployed, 
that brings the center of lift back up close to the center of mass, which allows it to glide really nicely back down and land safely on Kerbin. It's a simple fix until I'm able to design a brand new Delta Star. Now I went back to building up the Enterprise and getting it ready for its Minmus mission. One of the things I wanted to work on was the Minmus lander. It would use the Delta II rocket, the reusable Delta II rocket, to deliver itself into orbit. However, the Delta II rocket, while it had been used many times before to send the Prometheus, not the new space plane Prometheus, but the old rocket Prometheus, it had been used to deliver that into suborbit it wasn't quite ready for the new stuff that and on <laughs> on top of that i kind of forgot how to fly it but anyway tested out the uh minmus lander went back to the drawing board and upgraded it a little bit but then i knew that the enterprise would need to be refueled so i built a brand new craft called the star mule the star mule refueler it would have to be piloted because right now the technology is kind of low so even though i could make it autonomous or remote controlled the probe cord doesn't have the ability to follow prograde but if i put a pilot on there then i can follow prograde and make a proper gravity turn as well as be in control of it during landing a lot better by having it follow retrograde on the way down which is okay because i actually have a lot of hands on deck because i've been saving kerbals left and right so that's cool their former wannabe space agencies left them stranded in space and i saved them so they quit their jobs over there and came to work for me that's how you do it. That's how it's done. Hoorah. Wait, what? Now, I launched a star mule for its maiden flight, and it worked out just fine, but while I was focusing on the star mule getting into orbit, I had ran out of time to switch back over to the Delta II rocket, and it ended up disappearing, meaning it crashed. Refueled the uh, Enterprise, and for its maiden return, it landed pretty good. If you're wondering what kind of mods I have, check out the description below. But one of the mods that I have is called Trajectories, and for the most part, it's pretty accurate, and I damn near landed right on top top of the KSC. Now it was time to upgrade the Enterprise itself and give it more fuel. Fuel for the lander and perhaps itself. So what I did was I built the actual part for the Enterprise and built a small little lander behind it with an oversized engine to help maneuver the part so that it could dock with the craft and then land safely back on Kerbin. When it was launched I ended up taking too much time trying to get the payload into orbit again and I lost the Delta II rocket again. I would eventually wise up and figure out how to do it so I could put both payload in orbit and land the rocket safely, but that would be later. It would be a simple matter of just leaving a pinch of fuel left on the actual Delta II rocket so that it could slow down enough to deploy its parachutes. But like I said, I'd figure that out later. Now I knew that the crew of the Enterprise would have to be launched eventually, and that the Kerbal that I had saved in orbit around Kerbin using the Enterprise would have to be returned back to Kerbal, or Kerbin. Blech. So I needed to design an SSTO that could carry at least two passengers. A small pass passenger SSTO. Now the first small passenger SSTO that we ever built for career mode was called the Starbox. And uh, it's kind of a weird name but it kind of stuck. This would be Mark 7 or the seventh generation or variation of the Starbox. I wanted to give it some jet engines so that it could land safely back at the KSC if it was off target a little bit instead of being at the mercy of gliding back down. I wanted to give it some power and of course I needed to give it enough fuel and kick to get into orbit and have it at least 300 plus delta v for maneuverability once in orbit very simple but effective i wanted to implement the same kind of rocket bell shielding that i started to, started to implement on all my sstos for re-entry purposes not needed in the game but it makes it look more realistic makes it feel more realistic too so makes me happy i, I eventually want to do the same thing for the enterprise build some sort of shielded engine design so that when it comes back to kerbin for aero braking purposes it looks more more and feels more realistic. So anyway, I completed the Enterprise's upgrade. The Enterprise is made out of three modules. Now I don't have RCS technology unlocked yet. So back in the day when KSP first came out and the career mode first came out, the way I would do it, it was tedious, but the way I would do it is by simply getting as close as I possibly can to the craft by using the target navigation, using the prograde and retrograde of your ship in correlation with the position of 
of the target to speed up and slow down as perfectly as possible. I also turned down the thrust limiter on the rocket itself to give me a more fine, precise control. Because of the fact that we don't have RCS and we don't have the ability to have the crafts lock onto a target and follow it because we haven't upgraded a building or unlocked some sort of technology down there, that meant that I have to switch back and forth between both crafts as they slowly got closer and closer and closer to each other to try to have them follow one another until they finally dock. If I had RCS, this would be done in seconds, but because of this, it takes a little bit and it's relatively tedious. I want to eventually have the Starbox SSTO have its own docking port, but it's really hard to make a docking port for an SSTO that's shielded from the atmosphere to try to make it as dragless as possible and then be able to dock that port with a space station or something that's way, way bigger because of the fact that I don't have RCS. So when you're talking about something that's really big and something that's really small, it's possible to dock them without RCS. It's just a real bitch because something really big doesn't turn very well and something really small turns very well. But when, when it only has one engine to control itself and your docking port isn't behind that engine, but rather to the side or the bottom, it gets really weird and way too complicated to be worth my time. So it's just right now, for now, the best thing to do is just have them go out the airlock and transfer crew that way. I could take the extra steps, but I really don't feel like it. Eventually, I could make a SSTO that has a docking port on its nose, which would give me better control and ability to adapt to orbital drift, but that's okay. It's fine. It's fine. I can see it in the comments below. Docking without RCS is so much easier than with RCS and blah, 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 blah. Hey, whatever makes your game fun, right? For me personally, I love RCS, but to each his own. That's not going to stop me from building anything, of course. Like, I want to I be able to put a space station to orbit here pretty soon. I think there's a contract that actually makes you put one in orbit for some company, and they pay out pretty good, too. So now, ultimately, I transferred crew over, especially the astronaut that we saved in orbit, brought them back to Kerbin, which is a pretty good test for the re-entry capability of the Starbox, or the new one. Launched the Mimis lander on the Delta II rocket, and on board the lander was the legendary crew. All four of them. Well, three of them, since Jebediah was already on the Enterprise. Bob, Bill, and Valentina. This legendary four would go to Minmus and make history and all that jazz. Thankfully, in this launch, the Delta II rocket landed safely, and the precious payload made it to the Enterprise. Two more refueling missions would need to be taken place in order to replenish the fuel on the Enterprise and the Minmus lander. The second, this would be a total of three refueling missions. The second refueling mission was good, but we lost the Delta II rocket again, mostly because I forgot to leave a little bit of fuel in the rocket to slow down to deploy its parachutes. And the third mission, the third refueling mission, the Delta II rocket that launched it landed safely, but I designed the Star Mule to re-enter Kerbin damn near empty. But since the Enterprise didn't need all that much more fuel, just needed to be topped off, it left a lot of fuel in the Star Mule. So unfortunately, when it re-entered, it was kind of off course and it landed a little hard. Hard. So the refueler was lost, but no lives were lost. So that's good. I can I can replace the fueler. I desperately don't want to kill off crew, if at all possible. But there it is. The USS Enterprise, ready for its first Minmus mission. It's a little long, <laughs> kind of gangly. The tiny little engine that it has is very fuel efficient, but it's a little on the slow side. I think after the mission, I'll go ahead and upgrade the star drive. Give it a couple more rockets in there, so I don't have to take five minutes for a damn burn. But yeah. She's ready to go. And that's it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for being a part of this channel. If you liked what you saw, please leave a like. And if you really liked what you saw, consider subscribing. We also have a membership program. If you become a member, you get cool little emojis and badges and stuff next to your name. Pretty cool. Check it out. But anyway, love you all. Stay safe and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye for now. Bye-bye.